Martin Kruger. My Mark. arch nem. No, no. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yo, it's taken long enough to get yeah. you here, but I'm glad that we got to sit down. I um, I want to start with a, a slightly arbitrary question, which is like, if you, if you could name any one aspect of life that you think you could teach someone for real about something, what would that be? What is the thing that you think you're best at teaching people at? So can I start with a disclaimer? Yes. And say so that anything that comes out of me today is, I don't want to take it as medical advice. Yes. So it's to take it as anecdotal evidence from Marty, your mate. Yes. Who might have some interesting stories to tell. Because if anybody takes medical advice from me, I need them to go in home and check it with their physician. Yes. And, um, and then the other thing I thought, that I thought I'd bring up was the fact that like we, you and I haven't prepped anything. Yes. So, Purposefully. Uh, you know, I, I think as you get older, you start to have these health lessons, health challenges, and then you try and correct them if you if you privy to being able to fix it. But what would the one real thing I could help people with? Oh, man, it would be get off sugar. It's just consistently keeps coming up no matter who I listen to, no matter what doctors I follow. It's just the one thing it just keeps coming up. And when you really actively remove sugar from your life, you notice it. And you recognize it in the way your body starts to change shape. And then you've got to have this uh, like attention to saying, okay, well, maybe I'm addicted to the substance. Maybe it is that I'm addicted to a substance that's making me sick. But the vast majority of people just don't get how sugar causes damage to the body. Much like a smoker doesn't see the lung cancer that's on the way. It's this long process and the diabetes and the chronic inflammatory conditions that hit you when it's too late start with that teaspoon of sugar all the time and i think yes. that's the one thing and i think i've been drumming home forever yeah it's just like just give it up Focus. well let's well, let's actually delve there because when you say actively give up sugar i, I want to understand like i've gone through patches of say 30 days 40 days of no sugar but then i found the more sustainable route was i could mostly not have sugar say for the week and then i wouldn't mind having a packet of wine gums on saturday mm. Do you class that as actively giving up sugar? Or are you saying like, point blank, just cut it out? No, the, the difference between medicine, food, and poison is often dosage. Yes. You know, so we've, with the amount of people I've coached through this process of giving up no sugar, so many people have got dosage wrong because they're addicted to it. And it's a case of like, yes, it's not one pack of wine gums and it's not four wine gums, it's three packs of wine gums, a milkshake, a cup of Milo in the afternoon, and then it kind of snowballs into this huge binge type yes. behavior on yes. weekends, which is probably even more damaging than having a piece of chocolate every night. And there's lots of people that are able to sustainably take a little bit yes. where it stays a food. Yes. The problem is, is that we've gone into subconscious or, or ignorant intake of sugar. We don't know that if you go and buy a tomato onion mix at Woolworths, and you go look at the third ingredient in there, it's sugar. Yes. And it's like, okay, well, I didn't know that. It says tomato and onions. So I'm expecting tomatoes and onions. Yes. And why is it so delicious? <laughs> it's thrown a few teaspoons of sugar in there. Yes. I saw a packet of chips recently from Woolies again. Sorry to push on Woolies. But like, it was lentil chips. And guess what they had in them? Sugar. And like, it's chips. Oh, I know those lentil chips well. It's chips. But I suppose it is... It is being thrown in there to get you to come back sure. in a sense. You know, that's a very broken relationship with a, a feeling reward when something sweet comes to me. And, you know, and it's like, I, I just looked at how much programming uh, introspectively in my life gone, when are the times that I was rewarded with sugar? Yes. So after I went to a dentist or some type of unpleasant experience, I fell and hurt myself at nursery school. It was, here's a chocolate, here's a sucker, Here's a lolly. Here's something to make yeah. you better. And we always soothed it with sweets. Yeah. And like I think once we start to unpack these behaviors we've got in adulthood, don't we have to start saying, okay, what does little Marty want? Like what's Marty craving right now? Why are the wine gums on a Saturday night? Are you lonely? Are you bored? Well, you're I, it's, frustrated? I think it's like you say, I think a lot of people have built the concept of food in general, specifically sugar as a reward. So like, Oh, I just want something lacquer. I've had a long week. I just want that lacquer. And I, I have to say, I agree with you in that it's fascinating to observe myself. I often make a joke with my girlfriend where I'll have a, something with sugar in it after a while. And I'm like, sugar. 
It, so good. <laughs> it's, it is so good. I, it's clearly impacting mm. pathways in my brain that set off those dopamine receptors. Well, I've done lots of studies on similar medications that help people with cigarette addiction and given it to people and they managed to cut down their sugar. So it lights up the same pathways in the brain as nicotine. So you're going to get this dopamine hit from sugar and we've got to kind of unlearn these processes. And let's just sit there and go like, why is it that I'm only going to be satisfied right now when I get something sweet? So let's it's go back a one step you, So you as Marty Kruger, you've been cutting out the sugar. Let's talk about the upside as to what you've seen as a result. The, the, it's such a, I call it insidious substance. It's freaking in everything. So when you actively start reading labels, and you have to now go, okay, I'm really gonna give up sugar now for 30 days, call it 30 days, and you just say, okay, let's just put that aside. Then you, it's brought to your awareness of like, okay, wow, it is everywhere, and I can't eat that, and I can't eat that, and I can't eat that, and I can't eat that. And I think I noticed it together on a program that I'm doing now, where if we can just try and bring inflammation under control, the, the lack of inflammation in the body, which is a response by the body to a, a certain poison or a pathogen like a bacteria or a virus, the body's always trying to process that. That system of processing is called inflammation. Sugar makes inflammation go up. And inflammation can have so many wide-reaching effects. So it can mm. cause you to feel mm, fatigued. It can give you uh, aches and pains. It can make you just kind of just not feel like you're in the present moment. There's so many things. And sugar creates inflammation in the system, which means sugar needs to start being viewed as a poison. Would you reward your child with a cigarette on a Saturday night? Yeah. I mean, I, I, your, your sentiment is perfectly put. You wouldn't, obviously. Never. We'd look at it as insanity. But why are we rewarding our kids with diabetes when they... 60. Now if we can start seeing that relationship, and be like, geez, I really am maybe doing a little bit of damage, giving my kids ultra refined foods, highly processed, full of vegetable oils, packed with sugar, and then saying, yeah, as a reward. And it's actually a poison. You know, yeah. and my, my example, when clients said to me, says, I need help, what do we do? I was like, well, then ask yourself what your ancestors ate. A hundred years ago, what would they have been given as a reward? Maybe an apple or a nectarine. And I mean, we can find the best quality in the world now in every corner of of our cities. So then how do you label fruit in terms of sugar? Let's say you cut out processed sugars and you manage to look at labels and whatnot and so you manage to cut all these things out and on the odd occasion you might have fruit. Where does that, how does that fit into your narrative? Fruit still comes with it, what's called the food matrix or the plant matrix. It's got fiber in it so it releases sugars slowly to the body. If you look at the um, amount of carbohydrates inside sugars, it's really minimal. It's the refined cane sugar that we need to start re reinvestigating. And yes. even when I get clients that are like, okay, I'll give up sugar, but I, I need my candorel. Well, they've just moved sucralose to like use with caution. It used to be safe to use. It's now gone use with caution. So the studies catch up. And again, I think what's the deal with always needing sweetness to feel rewarded? And well, I think I asked the question because you could get through to me. I'm someone, when I think about this information, I go through patches with sugar, but for the most part, I really do cut sugar out. Mm. But if you put that forward to me in that way, I can put my head down and go. I think the average person, and I'm not dissing the average yeah. person, to go cold turkey is, in a sense, it's not going to happen. Mm. It's why most people can't give up smoking. or they, Some can, most can't. And so I'm thinking about it from both perspectives. When you remind me about the consequences of sugar and that it is a poison. Yeah. It does immediately make me think, okay, you, you have had your moments lately, that's one to mm. just get back on top of. Mm. I'm thinking for the average person where it's really hard. And so I'm thinking like, what happens if when you sit there, you're like, I'm, you know, I often hear people going, I'm just craving that little something. I yeah. mean, I go through it myself too. For sure. I mean. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, what happens if I cut chocolate and wine gums out and on the odd occasion I have a piece or two of mango? Like, am I, am I winning or am I fooling myself? You know, I think balance is also the key yes. here, you know, to sit there and say, well, I feel so restricted now because I haven't had any sugar for the last 14 days. Let me just have the chocolate. I think you just have the chocolate then. You know, don't go yes. give yourself a, <laughs> some type of like a neurosis of yes. sorts. Like the, we, we do need to have some type of balance. Yes. But I think just, just the simplest intervention would be to say, don't buy any more refined sugar and yes. don't use it in your drinks. That alone, and they don't have soft drinks. Yes. Uh, even if the soft drink says there's no sugar in there, just cut it. Well, I wonder just what 
they must be putting into the other soft drinks with no sugar to make it taste that way. So that, mm. that I mean, luckily I think uh, because I was severely overweight as a child, I had to learn if I touch those things, gone. So I can't really remember, you know, within reason, the last time I had a soft drink. It's just out. I don't mm. put sugar in my uh, coffee. Coffee is the one I want to get to a little bit later. Uh, on the note of sh then sugar, I'd be remiss if I then don't just bring up this magical word called alcohol, which I guess is on one end is a sugar. Mm. Um, how does this role play? What's oh. your take? Where, where are you at right now? So at the moment now, I'm probably on the... I'm, I showed you my before and after photos of now day 65 with zero alcohol. And if I'm ashamedly have to say, it's probably the longest stretch I've had without alcohol since I was 18, just ages ago. Yes. And kind of just going, well, I, I always, I'm a social drinker. I like to go out and have wine and drinks. And you know, we've had a good, few yeah, good times. Had, and it's good. A, a, I just got to the point where I read um, Alan Carr's book on addiction. And he says, well, maybe you need to have a conversation with yourself if you can't give it up and go, I don't want to touch the stuff for six months. What, what's happening over there? What's yes. going on? Why, yes. why do you need that glass of wine? Much yeah. like we need that chocolate to relax. Why do you need that beer to feel like you know how to dance a little bit better? What's yeah. the deal there? And then alcohol comes with obviously often sugar um, <laughs> and then bad choices yes. in food and diet. Yeah. And poor sleep. And so this creates this whole cascading spirals. effect. Yeah. You know, for me, the alcohol, alcohol at night time, Matthew Walker's work has shown so clearly, if you drink alcohol before bedtime, you ruin your deep sleep. Yes. And if you've ruined your deep sleep, you basically just go into like almost a pre-diabetic state for the rest, the next day. So your blood sugars are going to be all over the show. You're going to have cravings and you're going to go for the wrong foods. Yeah. There's such a cascade of poor decisions when it comes to alcohol. Look, you, there you're totally preaching to the choir. You know, you and I both have these, I go through these patches regularly where I mm. cut it out. It's actually been more for me to, when I know when I need to focus, put my head down and create momentum. I see alcohol as a great momentum breaker. Mm. And for many of the reasons that you mentioned, I wear an Apple watch and so it's very clear to me because I measure my sleep in close detail what alcohol does to sleep. Even one drink, yeah. it is frightening. Mm. And in my happiness workshop, I talk a lot about this, that we are physiological, biological creatures. Oftentimes, some of the simplest hacks is just solve these like simple things like sleep, mm -hmm. like your eating, your training, and c controlling where you see alcohol. But to the deeper point, it's an interesting mindset because whether you're talking about sugar, whether you're talking about alcohol, you bring up the most valid point around what is it about this thing that I absolutely need to have? I think most people aren't willing to sit down and ask themselves these very hard, deep and uncomfortable questions around why you need to. I understand why you'd like to. Sugar is easy to understand why someone would have it. And so is alcohol. Mm. But why you need to is a totally different thing. And then to your point, can you take these breaks? And often I say to our friends and my other friends, like, I think all, al all adults should take a little break. But it is quite astounding to me that people can't do it. I will then say back to the balance part that, <laughs> yeah. yes, it is <laughs> lacquer to have a few. Yeah. Even if it's when you manage to keep it within reason, there is this social lubrication and this easing. I think it ha it's like anything. It's a tool. Coffee is a tool to come, oh. you can use it to wake up. Yeah. Exercise is a tool to feel, get it yourself into a specific state. We're constantly altering states and alcohol has its little place here and there. But to your point, like, that people can't cut it out regularly or for long patches yeah. is frightening. Yeah. Well, when did that food used as a medicine become poisonous? That's always, you're going to go back to dosage, dosage, dosage. Like, well, are you allowed to have a certain amount of alcohol and then drive a vehicle where you might go kill people? Maybe that's the alcohol limit that you should be drinking. Yes. Where we tend to be like, ah, I'm going to Uber tonight, I'm going to really have a go. <laughs> like, there's a broken relationship with poison that we have in our bodies. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's like, it's okay, it's going to cause some damage, but it's fine, I've got to live it, it's okay. But eventually it catches up to you. Yes. If you're going to just hit that nail, no matter how lightly, into a piece of wood, there comes a time when that nail is deep inside that wood. Yes. And I think by then, the liver has been damaged. And I mean, personally speaking, my father passed away from alcoholism. And I watched that glass of wine on a Saturday and Sunday became a bottle of wine on a Saturday and Sunday, became Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, became Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. Yes. And so it creeped into the daily behavior habit. Yeah. You know, and it was just a case of just watching my dad go and I watched him spiral out of control. It was 10 years of that and then the liver failed. It was like, cheers. And by the time we figured it out, it was too late. Yeah. 
So th there's so much that I can talk to you about, but what I find something that you were doing uh, really interesting. Obviously, you mentioned you've been kind of 65 days no alcohol, mm. but there's some other things that you've been and, and let's say you've been cutting sugar, yeah. right? But there's some other interesting things that you've been doing around the amount of water you've been yeah. drinking. So run me through this. Just give me your thinking. And again, I'm taking it from this is what you've done with you. And I'd just love to understand mm. what mm. you've been doing with you. So there was this challenge I heard about. I saw before and after picture of a mate of mine. I was like, okay, that's impressive. Like, I, I, I didn't know the body can respond so quickly. Let me look into this a little bit. Part of the challenge was drink four and a half liters of water a day. Not sparkling, not flavored. Four and a half liters tap water filtered or filtered bottled water, whatever. And at first I was a kind of, I had this resistance, like that's too much, you know, you can damage the kidneys. You know, part of the challenge is you train twice a day. We also happen to live in Joburg, so we do sweat a lot. So I thought, let me give it a go. Let me give this a try. Let me just try it before I knock it, give it a try. So I thought, okay, it's a lot of water, we'll see. And the first three days were hellishly hard. <laughs> it was I can only imagine. ridiculous. It was a case of, like, I, I, how am I supposed to have so much water? Because when I wasn't drinking, I was peeing. <laughs> And it was just pee, drink, pee, drink, pee, drink. And I thought, okay, well, just stick it out. Probably about day number four, day number five, a little bit of sense, the sense of like, this may just be good for you. So now the food has become medicinal. You know, I started, when you go to the toilet, my bowel habits changed definitely. And then even the toilet habits, when you go and pee, you're like, oh, that was glorious, man. You know, so you get the <laughs> sense of like a, like a detox. You go like, oh, that was a good one. And then, Day 13 was my moment, and I looked in the mirror, and I'd all the fine lines on my face had disappeared. And I looked at my arms, and I was like, this is crazy. Like, really, all the little wrinkles and stuff had filled out completely. So the biggest change for me was definitely skin, day 13, but it was nonstop every day, four and a half liters. And now I've been day 16. And I assume you were just trying to break it up, and like just trying to spread those four and a half liters as widely, the day. Yeah, 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 I wasn't gulping. Can't even, yeah, you can't no, gulp. That's also not the way to hydrate. So the, whenever we did the blood analysis, we did live blood analysis on my blood. It was always a case of like I was suffering with chronic dehydration. But I'd, I only temporarily corrected that. I didn't continue with that lifestyle, not thinking like, okay, well, I guess you can re dehydrate very quickly. And it felt like once I'd hit week number three, week number four, I was undoing decades of dehydration because there was mental clarity all of a sudden that I felt. When I woke up, my knees didn't click, my back didn't ache. My sense of inflammation started decreasing. While I've been working in practice, I've been telling a lot of my clients, up your water, up your water, up your water, up your water. And I just thought, isn't it beautiful? Are the philosophies of healing in the East, when the body is in a state of toxicity, it's called a heat state. There's too much heat in the body. And heat in nature is represented in fire. You, know, you see an advert for a guy who's got arthritis and a knee and they apply cream to it, it's yes. always on fire. Yes. Well, doesn't the word inflammation have the word flame in it? So it's always heat, excessive heat in the body. Now in nature, if I see something burning, how do we put it out? Water. Water. You know, and we've got these natural laws running this body of ours. Maybe we work in them and we see how it goes. And that's why I just was like, before I knock the idea, let me try four and a half liters for 75 days. Right now, like I mentioned earlier, it's day 65. I can't go back. I just feel too good. What happened with regards to you needing to pee so much? Did, it, did your body naturally adjust? Yeah, definitely. And I think you just get used to it. Well, peeing so, so much? Yeah. There were days where I remember stopping at one of the shopping centers and I peed in three. I peed there three times in a day. It was more than in the four years that I've lived at the place. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is actually annoying me now. So for somebody who's a rep, who's on the road all the time, it would become an issue, it, it does. But the benefits so far outweigh the insignificantly small discomforts of having to go to the toilet all the time, that it's a non-negotiable. Do you think Maybe it will I'll continue to adjust? Yeah, I, I, there's no doubt there are days where you're on the toilet all the time, and then there's other days where you're not really. And then you've got to sit there and go, maybe I'm sweating a little bit. Maybe the body's catching up. But it's, uh, again, an experiment. And yeah. you're like, okay, let's see what happens today. Yeah, let's I, see how I, I, I so love that mentality. And so I was actually waiting to have this chat with you because it's something I'm going to try. But I wanted to understand it a little it. bit. But I love the experimentation idea. I think anybody, certainly entrepreneurs, and there's certain types of people that 
are constantly experimenting and iterating processes. And I love using myself as a yeah. guinea pig. I've learned a lot from that process, especially from a health perspective. And it's largely why I wanted to kind of have you here today. I, you know, I've known you for around uh, eight, nine years. Um, and once we became good friends, I started going to you um, across the board for health advice. It wasn't when I was in bad shape. It mm. was, I want to get better. And I brought you on because for me, I have always found major benefit from your thinking and the way you distill, uh, distill that information to me and, and so forth. Mm. And I think that was the point of capturing this on camera uh, and a few other things that I want to ask you. Because again, like you say, it's not there to be construed as medical advice, but I think you can, some people can look at things for themselves and go, I want to get better. You're doing it on the internet anyway. What are the different things that I can try? And, and you know, I'm, I'm quite willing to... Um, to try those. You come from a chiropractic background mm -hmm. and you've taught me a lot uh, about that space very informally. You've never been the sales guy. I, I've actually asked, I've just asked you lots of questions. You've taught me a lot about prevention being better than cure, about holistic medicine or not just or holistic health, how everything is connected to everything. And we've even done a few talks yeah. uh, together through Suits and Sneakers where you just shared your own perspective with the world. So I'd love to glean from you. We've spoken about sugar. This water thing is quite fascinating. Talk to me about some of the other ways you're thinking about optimizing your own health, the other areas. So many things to do. <laughs> so I did a little experiment about a year and a half ago. I said, well, let me try out what physical medicine feels like. So I went to my massage therapist and you know her well. I said, right, find it, fix it. I gave her a clean slate. Look for it, find it, make sure it goes away. And I had a rolling appointment once a week for about nine months, 10 months. Yes. Every time we went, there was more inflammation that needed to be dealt with. But after about four months in, I started noticing I'd start dozing off during her visits. You know, and there was nothing really for her to fix. Give it two or three weeks back, whack. All of a sudden, that inflammation returned. So I think fighting inflammation is going to be a lifelong battle. Yes. Much in the same way that we have to brush our teeth twice a day. We never look at that as an inconvenience, but we weren't taught to brush our spines or brush our bodies, you know, to, to practice personal hygiene. I know hygiene's maybe the wrong word, but just bod bodily awareness care, mm. you know, and just start taking care of this thing that I'm inhabiting right now yeah. and looking after it. And I reckon from a bang for buck perspective, deep tissue massage is unrivaled. Yeah. Here's my problem with it. Not my problem with it. Problem with my take on it was that I thought I can outsource my responsibility to stretch and strengthen my own tissues. And it was a case of like, I don't feel like stretching my calves today. I let my massage therapist do it next week for me. And I noticed that that wasn't ha impacting by any means my rate of injury at gym. It's got to be 50-50. There's got, to be an op there's got to be time where you say, all right, I'm going to be lying down receiving therapy right now. And then the other time is I'm actually going to be giving this body therapy. And the one that I've been using, the example I've been using is with me drinking all that water, the saying, please, can you just quickly go, okay, take a pee for me. Like, please, just please go. <laughs> Nobody can pee for you. Yes. Nobody can do the work necessary to yeah. restore and rehabilitate the body. And like that's why we, when I wrote Don't Sit Your Back with Craig, it was a case of like, how are we going to rehabilitate these bodies that are clearly deficient without giving people the tools necessary so that they can fix themselves? It's such a, again, this weird brokenness of I'll go to the therapist, the therapist will fix me. I don't think, I think they can do 50%. You yeah. know, it can put you in a position where you're now empowered to take care of yourself. I think that was a big learning for me. Massage therapy. Yeah, you know, and look, on the massage therapy side, I can genuinely vouch. Uh, I landed up going through to your angel pa there, <laughs> and uh, she, she, was, she was magic. Mm. And I definitely, I felt better. But it actually brings to the next point. You know, if you look at just where the world's gone in the last uh, few months again, beyond COVID, I'm talking about its impact of the lockdowns on people, the economy is quite broken, people are under severe pressure. Even for me, I found this happening in the last two weeks. We are, at, we are under so much pressure mm. here at work. And I don't know where to turn. Now, I know intellectually that I should be waking up early and 
training and doing these things. And my training is like lukewarm at this point in time. And then sometimes we get so busy at work and it's, that's, it's like something has, something's got to go at some point. Something's got to drop off. And on the odd occasion, it's those things that are so important. Yeah. It's the amount of water I've been drinking. It's what I've been eating. It's how much I've been training. And I know that for sure I haven't been as consistent in say uh, this year as I have been the last four years. But I don't know how to balance all these things, if I'm honest. On top of this mental health where I'm under so much duress and pressure as a small business owner. Mm -hmm. And there are many people, because I speak to a lot of small business owners every single day. And then there's financial pressures. And, you know, we've got a team of seven, eight, nine people at the Trist. And, and so you're building this team. You're responsible for them too. And, and what I'm saying is I'm not, I'm not playing victim. I'm saying I, I can understand just how easy it is to get swept away. Yeah. And so now I must add stretching. <laughs> Yeah, which I hate so yeah. much. Like of all the things I can do, I can. I, I even haven't been going to Nancy lately because it's just been that too much out of my day, and something has to give. And so I'm wondering if you have advice around, or maybe even just some thoughts around how how do we bring all of this together? Because I think that people intellectually know that they should be looking after their bodies, mm. but they've got a billion other things going on, and so they wait for the club. And part of why I wanted to have you here is I, I don't want to wait for my heart to start feeling sore before I start doing something about it. And I've been thinking, I've been feeling guilt, if I'm honest. Just in the last two weeks ago, I'm like, you know you haven't been yeah. training. You know you haven't been eating properly. Mm. And so I have to figure out a way to build it up again and make it the number one priority. And I know then everything else. But do you, know, do you understand the conundrum I'm talking yeah. about is how when you've got a million things on the go and you're trying to build a business, now nah, I'm a stretch. I must go to Nancy. <laughs> which I emphatically am for. Mm. I must eat clean. I must drink four and a half liters of, of water. I don't know how to, how do we balance these things, Mark? Uh, quite uh, seriously. Like how, how productive are you when you're hungover? Yeah, yeah, no. Nothing. Yeah. The vast majority of us are walking around with a mini hangover all day long because we're in a state of toxicity. And it's that toxic state that we call inflammation. Everything I'm always driving towards now is just saying, just minimize inflammation and everything will sort itself out yes. for you. The more you chase the condition or the symptom or the name we've given some, some expression of illness in the body, the more we chase that, I think we're going down that rabbit hole of not really nailing it. it I, with what I've experienced is it's, if you start to really tackle inflammation, you will then get to the root cause of why it is that you're not productive. And if you want to be productive, that's when you can turn trust into something serious. Yeah. But if you're walking around in a mild hangover state over here, you're not good to anyone. No good to anyone. How do we get out of that hangover? Well, you've got to exercise. And you've got to drink water. You've yeah. got to stop alcohol. And you've got to stop sugar. It's the basics. You've got to get sunlight. There was a lady that came to see me about a month ago. And when I saw her last week, I said to her, okay, so I want to explain, or I'd like to get some info from you. And when she came into the clinic, she had terrible back pain. She was like stooped over in a bad state. And it took us a couple of visits to get her right. And I said to her, nurse, when you came to me and you presented here, how old did you feel? And she was like, yeah, very old. I, I really wasn't in a good space. I said, okay, now this week that you've got a big smile on your face, you're feeling great. How old do you feel? She said, I feel reborn. I feel like a newborn baby. I went, okay. So now we can grasp that aging is subjective and it's directly related to the ability to move freely without pain or suffering. Mm. You know, if, what if we just really started saying, okay, well, instead of spending all this money on like anti-aging, just go, okay, well, hold on a second. Am I able to move my body freely at the capacities that it, you know, at, a, at the potential that it could move? Yes. And, and look at my age based on that metric. Mm. When I sat at my park recently, you're watching kids jumping on trampolines, playing on jungle gyms, and then the adults sitting on a bench watching them. And I was like, no, just watch this. How do I know which one of these people is old? It's the loss of the ability to play. Mm. You know, and adults don't want to do hopscotch anymore, skip or run and hang off things because they're scared they're going to pop that shoulder out or they're going to twist their ankle. That's a really good point. Such a, we've forgotten how to play. You know, and I think that, how do we introduce the idea of what would my day look like if it were play? Mm. You know, and how can I integrate that? So I hate going to gym. Gym sucks, but I love swimming. And maybe I should start swimming and then call that gym. 
you know, yeah. and just start changing the way we look at these tasks that are maybe laborious or hard work, yeah. but they're, they're necessary. I think you've hit the nail on the head around how, you, how you're framing these things, but I want to go back then. If M Marty's giving advice to Marty and you're, you're caught in a, a bit of a rut, let's prioritize where to start. So like, I know that stretching is so important, but maybe you could say that right now to get going, the water and the sugar really is a good place to, like where, how, do, how do you create this hierarchy of places to start since, because one of the things I saw even with having a CrossFit gym, with my old mate Dwayne Hearn is, is that people oftentimes they want to come in and then they want to be like a marathon runner in three weeks. Mm. And so they don't, and they've got this story in their heads that they must walk in and smash it from get go. Yeah. So they don't see it as a win. If they walk in, they do 10 minutes, they bank it, they leave. Yeah. And they do that again tomorrow, but maybe they make it 11 minutes and so forth. So I found that most people fall off a wagon because they try to do a million things at once. So if we were to, if you were giving me advice and I'm asking you for it, how, are, how would you say to me like, okay, to get back to optim optimization, here's where I want you to start and then I want you to move here and then I want you to move here. If, if you were giving me like a guide. So you've given up sugar. Ish. <laughs> okay, so would you say like that's a place, like start right there. I'd start right there, secondary, I'd look at intermittent fasting. Yes, okay. I, do, I do that. Okay, so I'd, I'd say, listen, start investigating intermittent fasting because that helps you deal with the addictions. and learns, teaches you how to say no again. Yes. Um, from an exercise perspective, again, this thing of exercise, the minute I say to somebody, I need you to start exercising, in their head they think treadmill at gym. Yes. But exercise could be a ballet class, it could be a dance class, yes. it could be hip hop, it could be walking in the park, you know, like it does. Well, you to taught me this movement is medicine. Yeah. That is, I quote you all the time yeah. in happiness. Yeah. My friend, Doc Marty says movement is medicine. Yeah. And it's, it's helped me on days where maybe it's a Sunday and I've trained, but I still go move. So I go for a walk. Yeah. You directly You're getting that out. Anyway. Like, were we designed to be behind four walls all the time and blocked in and, and you know, in studios or in offices all the time? There's something so uh, refreshing when you go out for a walk mm. outside and then go do it barefoot. Yes. You know, just feel the earth under your feet and you're like, wow, okay, this exercise turned into some therapy all of a sudden. So let's just go, so it was sugar, intermittent sugar, fasting. Intermittent fasting. Um, there's mm. no doubt more emphasis on sleep. You know, sleep hygiene is the big one. Yes. Um, stress management. Mm. Stress management, exercise go together. For me, I exercise my way out of stress. It's a stress reliever. Mm, be too. careful not to be the guy who's the mountain biker who does 250 Ks on a Saturday and a Sunday because he hates his job as the CEO of a huge company where he's highly stressed because he's not using exercise as another stressor to the body. We've yes. got to remember to turn that thing off as Because there's a dosage well. again. Dosage. You know, so dropping that down a little bit. So, it, you know, just... And this water thing. Water, hydration. What is Simple. your then take on things like, I mean, you and I could talk about this. So let's say you're doing a lot of these things and you're moving and you're sleeping because a lot of these things, I, I must say, the sleep thing I've really prioritized for yeah. a long patch of time. And again, I, I find if you can't measure, you can't manage. Mm. And so I'm very heavy on, on measurement. Um, so then we get in line with supplementation. Let's assume that we are cutting sugar. So we're doing these basic things right and we're eating fairly well, et cetera. Are there some things that we, um, that if I came to you and I asked you, what would you recommend for me? Are there some things, is it bogus? <sighs> you know, if, again, we're gonna go back to inflammation. We've got to look at the vast majority of people suffering with some form of inflammation, meaning pain in their joints, pain in their muscles, um, fog brain, and, uh, some type of discomfort, anything that ends in the word itis. You know, sinus artis is inflammation. Inflammatory conditions are definitely benefit by, benefited by taking good quality omega-3 fish oil. Just omega-3? Omega-3. Be careful of omega-6 and 9 because you get those naturally in the diet and you want to offset the ratio. So I don't want to get too technical yes. about it. But omega-3 fish oil, a good quality supplement, not yes. something very cheap. Don't buy cheap supplements. Your body's not cheap. Get a good quality omega-3 oil. You start bringing the inflammatory markers down in the body. That's well Good. shown in the literature the other one that's come up 
thank goodness, which I've been preaching for 10 years already, is vitamin D. It yes. seems that everybody, now that COVID's come along and said, hey, by the way, this extreme inflammation that people experience with this viral infection, how do we get it down again? Vitamin D keeps coming up nicely now. So there's lots of literature. Yes, and I, I have myself, I've seen it a lot. It's equally on both Vitamin D, omega-3, the two supplements that I say, listen, if you really want to get your inflammation down, your inflammation, you're going to drink more water, omega-3 and vitamin D. Those are safe bets. Obviously, you need to go and check that you don't have, you read the package insert and make sure you don't have any um, contraindications. Mart, we've had a, a great chat and I think there, there's been a lot in it and I've learned a lot just about your thinking. You're great at packaging certain nuggets because it's just naturally how you think. I want to actually close the floor with you. Maybe a, a lot, one of the last things you'd like to mention that I didn't ask. So something that you think would be helpful to me um, that I didn't bring up in the first place. Yeah. On this challenge that I've been doing, I realized the power of consistency and persistence. So uh, the, uh, with this program, there's no cheat meals and it's two exercise sessions a day, no rest days. And I think there's, I'm learning so much about being persistent and having a non-negotiable attitude with mm. certain rules or certain behaviors that are going to benefit your life. I was at a festival on Saturday last week, which a friend of mine has. And at the festival, I was telling the guys, okay, it's nine o'clock, I've got to go home. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, I know you're going to really think I'm crazy. I'm going home to sit on my spinning bike for an hour because I have, I made an agreement yes. 60 days ago that I'm going to train every day, twice a day. And it's non-negotiable. And that, wow, did I get slack. Yes. I got a lot of people yeah, saying, you're yeah. crazy, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I was like, you know it's what? Extreme. It, it's extreme. I, I like to keep my promises. Yes. And I made this promise to nobody except me. I was like, let's see if you can do this thing. And it's that consistency that has just led to me feeling great day in yeah. and day out. It's, you know, and that little demon of laziness rears his head every now and again. He says, ah, worry about it tomorrow. Yes. You know, don't do it today. Leave it. It's fine. It's not fun. Persist. Push. Yeah. The universe will bend and make way for people that don't give up. And I think that's where I can say now. My latest lesson has really been one on persistence. I was just about to say, because for whatever it's done for your body, that, that progress and that promise that you make for that time, for here and emotionally and spiritually, mm. I've been through those times where I'm just sticking to it yeah and so i think part of this conversation came to this is you know I, I think it's okay for people to go through ups and downs in the same way i talk around in the happiness workshop around the note of toxic positivity you you have to know that in life everything goes in cycles and swings and roundabouts mm. so that time is coming somewhere you, you know you can't just be on song all the time and you learn from those points but that rebound is power and I, i've just been thinking about it a lot like it's okay to fall off the wagon, but you've got to get back up. Mm. I think it's a great message, but your point around consistency and persistence really does matter. I really want to just say thank you so much for, uh, for coming through. My goal, my aim, is that I have a certain audience, and I am always trying to create content in some form that will help them become better versions of themselves. So this health optimization thing is something that's so near and dear to me, mm. and I know how hard it can be sometimes and i think just hearing someone speak about these things in the way you have the way you shape it it's so powerful and that's my goal and i think you're world class at at what you do just remind me thank you, you how old are you 44 44 and and why i'm mentioning it is i know we we joke a lot about it as mates but like i think the proof there is in the pudding i think if i look at you and how you've aged and how you look and Right, it, like it's important. I mean, we do call you Dr. Dick sometimes because you and I have that type of relationship. But the reality is, is that where you're at for 44 is remarkable. The proof's yeah. in the pudding there. And that's, you know, I'm not saying, I, I, you, you said it right in the beginning, like this is not medical advice. You're just sharing anecdotes. Yeah. But I think this is an anecdote worth following because there's evidence here that this is working. Yeah. And uh, it's always been something that's been very inspiring to me. And like you said, age is subjective and you you can certainly defy age if you follow these principles. Mm. 
And I think for this reason and many more, I, I so badly wanted to have you here. So thank you for being part of this. And the only other promise you've got to make is that you will come back and so we can discuss yeah, other topics. Sure. Definitely. This is your close-up camera over here, Mart. Leave the people with a, a, a closing like a closing thought or maybe if they want to follow you on Facebook, whatever. Yeah, if you, you want to get hold of me, Doc Marty Official on Instagram as well as Telegram. Um, and yeah, I think that, you know, taking care of yourself is the best investment you'll ever make. Something that I'm always so upset by is when I see people suffering unnecessarily, you know, and mm. it just takes a little bit of effort every single day. And again, that persistence and consistence can give you the body that you really want or deserve later in life and i i don't think i don't really subscribe to this thing of you as you get older and you just get more and more less capable yes it's not a given it doesn't have to be that way it doesn't have to be that way it takes effort everything worthwhile takes sacrifice everything worthwhile is not easy mart you're a legend thank you for your time thank you